one of the constants at Big Finish over the past seven years has been Alex Kingston reprising her role as Professor River Song uh, for the audio medium. We actually have, to date, at least 10 box sets centering around River Song, titled The Diary of River Song, where she's met doctors uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, and presumably more. Uh, and the latest release is Two Rivers and a Firewall. Now, before anybody asks, I have not listened to any of these other sets yet. I'm I'm quite poor, so I didn't have time to do it. But uh, Two Rivers and a Firewall is actually like my entry point into the Diary of River Song box set. I did listen and review that Tenth uh, Doctor and River Song set from a year or two ago. That was a pretty solid set. But here we have Two Rivers and a Firewall, which has a quartet of standalone stories. Uh, we've got The Two Rivers by Tim Foley, Beauty on the Inside by Lizzie Hopley, Black Friday by Lauren Mooney and Stuart Pringle, and Firewall by Barnaby Kay. Uh, this got a, bit, a few people excited for two reasons. First things first, we have the Autons in a River Song, in a River Song box set. The Autons are a fan favourite villain. And we also have the returning character from Silence in the Library and Forest of the Dead. We have Proper Dave. And we don't actually have um, somebody as an impersonator. We have the actual Proper Dave, played by Harry Peacock, reprising his role after 14 years. That is dedication to the role and I'm all here for it. What we'll do is that we'll go through these stories in the order of the box set. We're going to be talking about the two rivers first, which... But as the title implies, is a multi-River Song story, kind of like a multi-Doctor story, where you have Alex Kingston as River Song, but you also have Mimi M. Kaisa as the other River Song as well. How is this possible? Why are there two River Songs? Is this like a regeneration type thing? Is this alternate dimensions? Is this what on earth is going on? Let's find out in a brief clip. Why do you doubt I am who I say I am? Because I'm River Song. <laughs> You? The original, you might say. And I don't appreciate somebody spreading rumours about my demise. Wait, so that wasn't a bluff out there? No, it was not. You must be confused. Did you trip and hit your head? You think all that frizz would protect you from concussion? The frizz? Oh, heck. Oh, I should have remembered. You're sticking to your story, then? It's not a story. But I know what's going on now. I'll wait for you to catch up. Okay, few options here. You're a liar. I am terrifically dishonest, but not this time. An altered clone? I've had a few of those. Well, so have I. You're not special. Android. Actress. Augmented Androgum. Mm -hmm. You smash them all together, and you have my ideal date. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't get to do that. I get to do that. Why? Because I am River Song. Nice to meet me. So am I. It is a fun dynamic where you've got this larger than life character, River Song, played by Alice Kingston, and she has to kind of deal with herself. And it's like, oh, is this really what I'm like? Am I really this over the top all of the time? And having to deal with that. This is a story which I think Stephen Moffat, the creator of River Song, would be incredibly proud of because it is a very timey wimey one. Now, um, the normal Our River Song, played by Alex Kingston, meets the other River Song, played by Mimi M. Kaisa, uh, meets the other River Song in River Song's tomb, in a sarcophagus. They open it up and, oh, this other River Song is inside. Who is she? How did she get here? I'm not going to reveal it here, but it's a pretty interesting mystery. But the mystery starts unraveling across a very specific person's timeline. This other archaeologist who is on the mission for the Two River of a Song, who winds up dying on the mission, and then the Two River Songs have to go back through her timeline in order to try and change the sequence of events. I really like how you had this more empathetic River Song, played by Alex Kingston, trying to be a good influence on the other River Song, who who is a bit more cocksure of herself, who is a little bit more um, a little bit more laissez-faire with the collateral damage that she inflicts across the rest of time and space, and how honing it down to a single person and a single timeline really helps to um, to, to humanize and to make this other river song a lot more empathetic and a much more uh, much more standard hero, but kind of it works for the purposes of this box set. And I like how it had universe-ending stakes, but the most interesting part about it was just the timeline of 
one person. I thought that it was a really good dramatic emotional anchor for this box set. It was an awful lot of fun to take a 42, oh no, not more River Song. If you're not a big fan of River Song, firstly, why are you listening to a The Diary of River Song box set? Not only that, but series 10 of these box sets. But if, if you are a big River Song fan, this is a very good definitive River Song story. Kind of like a multi-doctor story where you find out what you love most about a particular doctor by how they interact and respond to themselves. This is a really good way to do it. I don't really know if they'll expand on it in near future. I do think that Mimi M. Kaysa has charisma to spare. And I think that if she were to return to these box sets or be an offshoot River Song in future releases or future stories or whatever, I'd be all here for it. But for the purposes of this particular story, the two River Songs work really, really well together. I also think that uh, the sound design on the villains is particularly interesting as well. Like I said, I won't dive too deeply into the spoilers there. But the whole premise of we're trying to find the tomb of River Song, I think that it's a really good starting point and a really good way to, to, to leap into the mystery of these two characters. Now, the next story is Beauty on the Inside. And this is from Lizzie Hopley. Lizzie Hopley is not a stranger to the River Song collection. Uh, Lizzie Hopley wrote Precious Annihilation, which was the story with the 10th Doctor on the 10th Doctor set where they were hunting explosive jewellery and this is a little bit more of that vein it opens with River Song crashing an auction for a uh, a forgery of a painting of a royal family and it was a royal family that has been around for hundreds of years but the painting is like brand spanking new like the, the, the family haven't aged at all this is clearly a fake painting a fake reproduction so River Song follows the trail of of that painting to find out what is going on with the family. Minor spoiler alert, this is just the premise of the story, but I, I have to get into this in order to talk about the story on any sort of level. The royal family is indeed still alive. However, they're behind a glass wall, they're losing their minds, and they have been alive for a very, very long time. Let's play a clip from Beauty on the Inside. How do you plead? Wow. What's next? Jam tarts and croquet with a mad hatter? No defence offered. Does Lazari want to check her over for parts before we do it? Fetch him! <coughs> do what? Get off! Stand still. Rope length is calculated against weight, movement offsets precise noose placement, providing an unhealthy experience for observers. What? You're talking about my execution? That was your trial, dear. Goodness. <gasps> and I thought I was forgetful. Guards? Uh, <laughs> wait just a minute! I remember this colony going solo. I watched footage of your coronation. Crowds waving flags like the old days of Earth. You gave a speech about unity and peace under the Tremagi realm. That was 300 years ago, and you didn't do it from a rocking horse. You are here, but that is impossible. You look so young. I have an excuse, but you lot, unless Semper 8 can make time manipulators out of potatoes, need to explain yourselves. Bring her to the glass. I want a closer look. So, Beauty on the Inside is a really, I personally found it to be a really freaky story, in a really good way though. You've got these characters, they're, these, they're the princess and the prince and the king and the queen of, uh, of, this, of, this, uh, of this planet, and they've been kept alive against, kind of against their will, it's, it's spoilers, um, shh, spoilers. Damn it! I, can, I only have one chance to make that joke, and I blew the delivery. I apologise. But for, like, you've got um, the, these voice actors, uh, Chris, um, Christopher Harper, Christian Edwards, Susan Hingley, Abby Harris, playing this really like faltering and falling apart mentally. This royal family, who their bodies are brand new and their bodies are young, but their minds are decrepit and old. And it was like real, like the way technology also factors into it was real, like dark black mirror shit, like really cool creepy premise and i think lizzie hopley has like really outdone herself here on the premise and the concept here and the voice acting really sells it across the board alex kingston's great across the box set but when it comes to the supporting characters i think that this is the story where they're really uh really picking up um picking up the pace i think all of the voice actors in beauty on the inside are really terrific 
a lot of really good multi-rolling as well but for uh, beauty on the inside this really interesting look at like uh, uh, almost like a ship of theseus of like humanity and, and people's brains and their minds even if their bodies are young when they're forced to stay alive through technology what that does to them and why would they want a monarchy this particular monarchy to be alive for so long in this world in the first place really interesting great ideas and I think that Beauty on the Inside does stick the landing for those ideas. I think Lizzie Hopley's script here is terrific. I think it's definitely an improvement on Precious Annihilation, which was a decent story, but it was a bit of an awkward middle chapter of the Tenth Doctor and River Song box set. Beauty on the Inside is a real terrific release. However... It is overshadowed a little bit by Black Friday, uh, with Lauren Mooney and Stuart Pringle both writing that one. So this is a story that takes place on Omnia Forum, a massive shopping centre uh, that's like the size of a planet, that's like thousands and millions of square miles long. It's got a 200-year anniversary, and River Song has been invited to a party on this planet that is just a massive shopping center however she gets there and there's a little bit you know it's a little bit less everything must go and more everything has gone and everyone must die uh, and she uh, she finds somebody called mikhail Mikhail is played by Paul Baisley, who is this recluse who has been living on this shopping center planet alone for an indeterminate amount of time he's been there for so long even he's forgotten how he got there and how long he's been there for living on his own with nothing but the shop window dummies from keep like keeping him company shop window dummies hmm, i wonder which stories the autons are going to be in for this one but he, so mikhail rescues river song and takes uh, her to his man cave and it's it's not exactly what you'd want from a from a from a man cave let's play a clip this is home. Home sweet home. <laughs> For now. Uh, why? What's wrong with it? Nothing. It's just very, uh, full. I've been collecting things. It's like Aladdin's cave. Yeah, that's what I think. It's like the library at Alexandria. Except mainly hockey sticks and lampshades. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Can I, um, can I, um, can I get you a drink? Sure thing. I hiked down to kitchenware last winter and got a soda cycle. It turns air into any one of 3,000 flavours from across the galaxy. Anything stronger? Uh, I couldn't make it that far, sorry. Oh, you're fine. Uh, so, Mikhail, what do you do for fun around here? Because it looks like you've been camped out for a while. I mean, all sorts, I guess. I go shopping. Naturally. When it's safe. And, uh, and I watch things, box sets, you know. Oh, it must be riveting. Number Crunches is my favourite. It's just a load of sad blokes in an office colony off Beta Gruis, but it's, <laughs> it's dead funny. I must have seen every episode twice. I bet. Mikhail is my spirit animal, and I'm not afraid to say that. So this is basically a almost like romantic comedy between River Song and Mikhail. And there's, they mention it in the behind the scenes, there's like a, a throwaway line in the TV series where River Song says, oh, I once dated an Autumn. Uh, and <laughs> that, that gets a lot of play here uh, in, in, this, in this story, Black Friday. Now, this was a lot of fun. This is my favorite of the box set. Black Friday is like one of my favorite big finish stories of the year so far. In terms of like, not necessarily from the best box set, but in terms of the actual one hour of big finish episode that we've released in 2022 black friday is like easily instant top five it's a really fun and human story where river song tries to save mikhail's soul somebody who has just been abandoned by like in the shopping center and the autons attack and the nesting consciousness is uh, is there trying to um to I can't even tell you what the nesting consciousness's plan is, but it's executed so well. You've got Eva Savage, who becomes like the voice of the nesting in the third act as well. She's terrific, really underrated performance here. Um, but this is a two-hander. This is Alex Kingston and Paul Baisley as River Song and Mikhail, and the two are electric together the chemistry is great the back and forth and the mystery surrounding mikhail how he got there who he is and his relationship with the autons and the nesting i found really really compelling to listen to the sound design is top notch the third act goes like 
off the chain, like intense third act, real stakes raiser, and you really feel like the peril right, for all of the characters involved. You're thinking, if it wasn't for the fact that you know that this is not how River Song's story ends, because it's River Song, you, you already know how this story ends, you'd think, oh my god, this is where River Song ends, this is as far as she goes, but yeah, it was a really terrific listen, Black Friday, like, if they just sold that for like six or seven pounds, it's like it's the download version that you could just listen to that story, that's the one you listen to, the Autons were great in it as well, they're a very limited, um, a very limited villain when it comes to the audio medium, because they don't really talk, but the use of the sound effects from the 1970s was spot on. The sound design uh, was done by Howard Carter and Lee Adams. I don't know who to attribute the sound design to Black Friday for specifically. It might have been both of them. It was top tier, top notch. Black Friday was terrific. So the final story, Firewall by Barnaby Kay, has a bit of a hard act to follow. Firewall is the basically the cover story of the box set. You can see that there's the, the neural relay, um, the, there's the energy signature at the center there. You can also see Harry Peacock as proper Dave. He's reprising his role for the first time in 14 years. You do also have Cal and Anita. However, they are played by different actors in this version. Cal is played by Merindoli and Anita is played by Victoria Ekonoye. So these are not the original TV counterparts, but they fit the roles really admirably. So this is the furthest with the exception of her ghost in the name of the doctor this is the furthest along the river song timeline that we've explored outside of the tv series where river song is now in the library databanks being overseen by the doctor moon and she's got the children there as well she's got the uh, the people from the expedition including proper dave including anita um basically in this virtual world, in their heaven, in their afterlife. However, as is implied by the title, Firewall, there is a breach and there is a virus trying to get into this virtual reality in order to hunt down River Song. And in this alternate reality, in this virtual reality, because of the way, this is a really clever tie-in from Silence in the Library and Forest of the Dead, because River Song and Proper Dave were uploaded into the library with pretty weak signals, it means that their memories prior to being in the virtual world are a bit compromised, and I thought that was a really clever way of tying it in and making it feel like a natural sequel to Forest of the Dead. However, I think that outside of that, the story in Firewall is not particularly interesting, but I'll talk about that in a moment after a brief clip. I don't actually exist. Not out in the universe. But here you exist. Charlotte saved you. The Doctor saved me and Charlotte saved you. The Doctor? Oh, long story. Both your energy signatures were weak when you were uploaded. That's why you can't remember. Don't answer it. Why? It'll be them trying to get in. Who's them? It must be some kind of virus. A really strong one if it's managed to get past the Doctor Moon. Doctor Who? Are we safe here? Yes, I think so. For now. There's a firewall around the house. Extra protection for you? Yes. Wait, who's Doctor Moon? It's a satellite that protects the core. The data core is the largest hard drive in the universe. It holds digital copies of every book ever written. Wow. And every book ever written in the future. Okay, wow. It's called the core because it's at the centre of a planet or the library. That's where the real books are kept. And River died saving it. Wow. And she saved me. She was amazing. Were you a soldier or something? She was an archaeologist, actually. But a fighty one. Wow. Dave, stop saying wow. Sorry, but it, it's a lot to get your head round, isn't it? And what was I before... Because, you know, you don't get much cooler than a pilot. An astronaut. Oh. Was suggestion in the chat uh, is that Cal and why is she not aged in 14 years? Uh, that is Cal, however, this is not Eve Newton who played her in the TV series. This is Merrin Dowley, uh, because you know, Eve Newton is presumably in her 20s now and is not able to play the younger version of Cal. Uh, the only actors who have reprised their roles from Silence in the Library and Forest of the Dead are Alex Kingston and Harry Peacock, who you both heard in the clip there. Uh, Harry Peacock is proper Dave, um, however, despite much pomp and circumstance being 
uh, like surrounding this release and Harry Peacock is back is it's it's not actually got that much to do like it's a decent role but it's like you know I, I wish that if they were going to reunite these characters that it maybe was a bit more in I, I would rather hear a uh, like a pre silence in the library story between river song and the uh the archaeologists who are going to visit uh, the library that's the kind of story that i would want to hear from this pairing but no i, I think that uh, having uh, their story is kind of over like you can do interesting stuff with river river song i think but maybe not with the rest of the crew hey jay is dr moon in it he is not unfortunately but that'd be really really cool they do reference the dr moon though because it's a story about a virus i think that the villains of the story as well like the malware that's trying to get in played by jason forbes is given an interesting like audio gimmick in that he's clearly on like life support and he's struggling to like live and survive and breathe and he has to be pumped full of adrenaline just to sit up in his life support system and stuff that's pretty interesting conceptually but it's not really interesting villain and his motives because he wants to try and get to river song to get revenge for something that the doctor once did but then the reveal over what the doctor did and like how that's worked around felt so hand wavy it didn't feel like it was enough to sort of center a story or a motivation around and i also thought that firewall itself as a story didn't really justify its existence that much i actually think despite this being like the one of the selling points of the box set that firewall was the weakest of the four it's not a bad story like big finish even like some of their worst stuff is like just average at best uh <laughs> quoting uh, tr uh quoting troughton but it, it honestly it didn't really grip me that much i didn't really think there was much interesting character stuff here beyond oh this is what happened in the virtual world after forest of the dead the position that it leaves um river song uh, proper dave and cal at the end it, it seems like it's trying to set up for sequels that it's not really justifying that interesting sequels can take place in this world didn't really work for me to be honest it's a decent story but it was a bit of a uh, an anticlimactic end to what is otherwise a pretty solid box set uh louis morehouse asking um if this was like a good standalone one or do you need to listen to any other big uh, river song stuff from the range this was my first purchase from the range and honestly with the exception of firewall i was really happy with it the other ones are like 30 pounds this is still in its like early release price bracket of 19.99 i think it's worth that price tag i think this is a really strong release alex kingston is always committed and up for anything and she I, you never get the sense that she's phoning any of this like these performances in uh, that continues here I think she does a good job here. If you're a fan of River Song, I think this is a good first box set. Whether or not it's the best box set, I am woefully unequipped to tell you but i will say that black friday is one of my favorite big finish stories of 2022 so far beauty on the inside was also really really good and the two rivers was like a really entertaining like timey-wimey story firewall is the weak link here i think but the rest of the ones in the in the box set are really really good as well and louis also asked i have big finish done much with the autons not too much they're difficult because they don't really have a voice i know that they've done some stuff in unit and uh, with the eighth doctor but they are a bit of a, a limit limited capacity when it comes to the audio medium but this was a really good showing for them black friday is like head and shoulders the best of this box set uh th yeah this was a strong release this was, i i enjoyed this i don't know if i'm that particularly invested in the entire range to maybe get a uh, friend of the family when it comes out next year but you know th there's there's some really good stuff i want like uh, i've heard that there's some really good stuff i should say i want to check out new recruit because that's like the third doctor big finish stuff which they've done a really good job with there's also i think it's in series two where they've got a story called 529 which is meant to be like top tier one of the best big finish releases that they've ever done um there's also uh, a, like a multi master box set as well so if you're a war do uh, like a war master completionist that's there as well so yeah she's got a long history in the annals of big finish that is set to continue for the near future as well and this was a really solid chapter as part of that long history this is yeah i enjoyed this a lot this was a good set i don't know if as a entire set on its own it's a must listen but you know black friday and beauty on the inside are must listen stories if that makes sense